Welcome back everybody to Grand Tactician The Civil War. I have returned from my week in Europe, so we're ready to dive back into some more content. If you have not seen the series up to this point, there is a link in the description that will take you back to the beginning. And if you are a patron, I will be later today upgrading, um, updating all of the info on the uh, Patreon uh, for this channel so that you'll be able to connect to the new Discord server with your appropriate uh, title that comes along with that in the discord so i'll update all of that i'll make a post later today to let you know when that's done so you can reconnect if you want to be a part of the discord server all right let's dive in it is august of 1863 the french army is now in southwestern arkansas so hopefully we're going to see them start to draw the attention of the union forces in the west here very soon let's see what happens all right, well, we've driven off the Union Army that was attacking us at Fort Woodbury, which is our fort right here in southwestern Kentucky. So that's some good news. So now I'm going to wait and see where we're at with the Army of the West. We need Pillow to uh, get his readiness back up before we can move. So they're going to sit tight for now. Uh, French Expeditionary Corps, I would expect another couple of weeks and they'll be into western Tennessee. I don't know where they're headed for sure. I'm hoping they're going to come up here into Kentucky. All right, now we've driven them out of Fort uh, Hebert. Fort Herbert, I guess it is, not Hebert. Um, let's actually get see if there's anybody available that we can put into that fort. I don't know what we might have available. Uh, I guess there's some places that we can probably recruit a little bit. We can get some Louisiana men in there. So like a 1500 draftee unit, it's gonna take 38 days for them to arrive, but eh, that's the way things go. And we're gonna add some artillery units there as well. And then we'll go ahead and upgrade those. Let's take a look at the Navy, our Savannah squadron. I'm gonna see if we can build some more ships here. I'm looking for not only artillery, but also uh, the firepower that we can get from some of these ships. Uh, I like the idea of ironclad gunboat rams. Let's see if we can build a couple of those. I'm just looking at where that puts us as far as our shipyard utilization goes. We're actually in pretty good shape. We have 12 ships in repair, and that's actually what's taking most of our space up at the moment. Let's get a couple of big big ships going too, like a couple of frigates. All right, Stephen Dill Lee's Army of East Tennessee, which is now an elite army, by the way, uh, is in a place where I think we can go ahead and try to make a venture up into East Kentucky again. See if we can't spread these guys out a little bit. Um, his first corps coming this way again. The French are in northern Arkansas now. So we've been waiting patiently for them to get on the scene. So maybe we can make our break out here and start doing something. I really need to deal with Virginia though because our support in Virginia is not very good. And that's because they've occupied so much of Virginia for so long. I'm hoping that making some moves in the west is going to draw some of these armies out. Yep, he's going to start moving into southern Missouri now. Maybe he's going to make a beeline for St. Louis. That would be perfect. Because if he does that and draws these guys off, I can send the Army of the West over here to help out. Okay, uh, here we go with another huge battle in Virginia. And there's a whole bunch of armies that are going to be a part of this on his side. One of them is 19 hours away, but the rest, he's got about 140,000 men and 290 guns. I only have about 80,000. So we're talking Chancellorsville type numbers here. This is not going to be easy. Okay, uh, we have to attack, which is not necessarily the ideal scenario here, but don't really have a lot of choice. But right now I actually have a bit of an advantage. Now I know that's not going to last, but it means that we have to be pretty aggressive in our movements because the longer we wait, the more men the enemy is going to have on the battlefield. So I'm going to start moving all of my divisions toward the objective, which is up here. 
you can see we've got a major morale issue and I think a lot of that has to do with just how long the Union's been occupying Virginia, but he's got about a 10 point lead on morale and we're in Virginia. Typically you don't see that when you're on home territory, but in this case, it's certainly an issue. I don't think I've issued orders for Claiborne's division to start moving, so let's do that. The morale is getting slightly better as we move along, but not by a lot. All right, I'm gonna move Jackson up a little further. We do have some glimpse of his forces being up there, but that doesn't mean they're not somewhere else too. All right, we're starting to see him now. He's gonna be dug in right along here. Got some high ground to get up and on top of. He's really dug in right there, it appears. And there's no good way to get out on his flank without taking way too long to do it. I could send some cavalry out that way. Uh, unfortunately, we just got notification that three more Union units arrived. That's going to put him up to, well, only 72,000. That's better than I thought it would be. But it's still going to take me a while to get everybody into position. All right, our first units to go into action, 41st Alabama, under Richard Buell, New York Copperheads, George Stewart. Let's go ahead and bring this brigade around. We've got the Tar Heel Legion in reserve. Let's get Anderson to put some skirmishers out and move forward. He's got a tough spot there. Because of the terrain. He's pulling everybody back though. I do have units starting to make their way around. This is kind of reminiscent of the Chancellorsville flanking attack here. That's a replacement depot. We gotta hold those guys back. Rest of our army is getting into position over here. He now has 86,000 men on the field. I'm going to bring Claiborne in right up here. I'm bringing in some batteries up here. Florida lead launchers, Battle River Rebels, Wilcox's battalion right here. Irvin McDowell's second corps just arrived. I'm worried that we're going to see units coming in from this side and we're going to get flanked. Uh, so I'm going to send... I'm going to have to send a couple of divisions out there. Oh, he just advanced right here. we got a battery right out in front, too. Hungarian and Pillars are going to have to go deal with them. Connaught Rangers. Let's get them moved in on the right side so they can fire as well. Alright, Hungarian, Hungarian Impalers. Charge those guns. Even if it means that we loot, that Hungarian Impalers have to break, we have to charge those guns. Can't let them sit there like that. Alright, well, I want Hood's division to move all the way up to here. Man, he's charging everything right into this center here. I'm getting kind of aggressive. I wasn't expecting that. Hungarian Impaler's broke. But I expected that might happen. Our morale's pretty fragile already, but I had to I had to deal with those guns. Connaught Rangers lost their brigade commander. John Adams wounded. Gotta charge the guns again. really concerned about what might be going on over here. I 
really can't afford to lose this battle because it probably costs me Richmond. Alright, we finally dealt with those guns, at least. Pegram around over here with the Hamden Sydney boys. And then let's advance across. Keeping an eye over here at all times. I have no idea where they're going to show up. Come on, Sibley, you got to get up there too. I got to get Pickett's men up into line somewhere. All right, casualties are pretty even right now. He's now got 116,000 men on the field. Uh, and I don't know where a lot of them are. And morale's in no place where I can just maybe defeat a few units and win this battle. I don't know. I don't know if this is going to be a winnable one for me. Having these unstable brigades from the beginning does not help. There they are. I knew this was going to happen. Thankfully, we were starting to move folks into position. I don't know if we're going to be able to hold them, though. Armagh Irish, they're already disrupted in terms of their cohesion. All right, let's move these cab brigades up. Ugh, we can't keep taking even casualties like this. Hit the guns. mess. Ugh. The numbers just aren't working in my favor. doing over here. First Armagh Irish taking a lot of casualties. Allegheny Raiders are too. Let's get the Willamette Guard over here on the left side. Why do I have a brigade back here? That's not the... First of all, let's get Jeb Stewart up there with his army. Is this the... Yeah, it's a replacement depot, that's why. Anderson's division, on the other hand, needs to be up there. Let's get these guns up here. Ah, who broke? Armagh Irish, I was afraid of that. Their, their morale was already low. Same thing's going to happen here. Starting to inflict more casualties than we're taking, but it's just not going to be enough, I'm afraid. If morale had been more in our favor to start, maybe a different story. Taking 
major casualties prior. Is that over here? Yeah. Or Pyron, I guess it is, not prior. Oh boy. Yeah, brutal. Meanwhile, Willamette Guard's not taking any casualties for some reason. Because they're all firing on the Allegheny Raiders who've now lost half their men. And it happened just instantly. Uh, wow. Hit him. Come on, Sibley, get up there. Everybody hit him. Alright, this is a desperate gamble to try and shake things up. It's probably going to result in a bunch of casualties. I don't have a choice, though. I'm about to collapse over here. I'm going to have to retreat one way or the other. So I might as well try and make something happen. Lost 10,000 men, but yeah, see, now these numbers are gonna pile up on the Willamette Guard. This is a desperate gamble to try and break his left, but I don't think it's gonna happen. Oh, we wiped out one of his batteries. Where are they going? I cannot believe how long Willamette Guard is holding on over here. That's impressive. I'm going to send the Hungarian Impalers over there. I'm going to send Yule over there. Who was killed? Commander of the Willamette Guard just fell. Valiantly holding the line against an entire division. Beautiful stuff. Now the commander of the Ruhr Valley Brigade has been wounded. That's right over here. Man, the casualties. We've taken 10,000, we've inflicted 14,000. Surprisingly, we did cause these units to break, but... Okay, Arma Irish, let's pull it together here, guys. The charges worked to a degree. It's actually getting close to night, but I don't know if we're going to survive that long. It would be a small miracle if we did. I'm honestly surprised that this is working. The whole thing's just been a mess. But the way some of my units have held is just nothing short of heroic. New York Copperheads, there's a Willamette Guard, Rear Valley Brigade, Hamden Sydney Boys. Let's give them iron discipline also. Charge in there. Do it. Hit those guns. Oh my goodness, the firing that is going on right now. 16,000 for him, 11,000 for me, almost identical percentage-wise. Morale's in the toilet for both armies right now. Why are they not firing? Get some fire on those guys.
fuel over there. Alright, we broke another unit over here. Problem is, we're going to hit Nightfall, and then he's going to have a chance to reform with this massive army that he's got out there. He's still got 116,000 men. Well, about 100,000 now. And he's still got reinforcements that haven't arrived yet. These guns aren't firing. They're not in a position where they got line of sight, I don't think. Oh my goodness. This has just been a mess from start to finish. I'll send Loring over here if I can. Although by the time he gets here it'll probably be nightfall. Took another enemy battery. Very tired, Roth's Rangers, so we gotta be careful here. Let's dismount them and let them fire. Eighteen thousand enemy casualties, twelve thousand for me. Now we've actually got a slight advantage on morale. There's some more enemy coming this way though. Come on Hood, get your guys up there. Impalers up this way. Oh wow. Third Special Forces, they're getting lit up now. 20,000 enemy casualties, but the 13,000 I've lost are irreplaceable to me. Ugh. He's out in front. Can't get any of these other units to move to help him out. Royal Mounted Canadians, let's give them cold steel. Yeah. Well, it is September, that's why the days are so long. Get him up there. We just had a unit understandably break. Another one. I'm trying to get Loring into position because these guys are coming around to try and flank me. I don't know what's going to be left of my army after this first day. I haven't even been able to get down and get a ground level look because there's just been so much going on. Twenty two thousand enemy casualties now. Alright, Lauren, get there. That's the Virginia Legion. Wow. 
I haven't had any battles quite like this one. It's not necessarily a good thing for me, though. All right, there's the end of the day. And now his reinforcements are arriving. And you see that shift over back this way. Oh, okay. Okay, I'm trying to set up a, a way to win this battle. Uh, and that involves hanging on for dear life against whatever's coming down this way and then trying to crush this side over here. If I can break these units, I might have a chance. So um, the problem is a lot of these guys, like McClaw's division has lost 50% as a division. He's barely hanging on. Uh, so what we've got to do is we've got to crush this side and do so quickly. That's my best chance for winning the battle. And I, I put some cavalry right in behind. So if he does try to charge me somewhere, I can, I can send those guys up. push forward here. I'm going to grab some of these guns if I can. Uh, who was wounded this time? Walton, commander of the Carswell Crusaders. Why is this guy facing that way? All right, let's charge in with the with the cavalry. See if we can't break a couple of these units. This may work. I would be shocked beyond belief if we win this battle. I don't know how the Willamette Guard. They lost their commanding officer killed. They've lost about 60-65% casualties. They're still fighting. Incredible. Alright, let's send Green Berets forward into the breach. Do it. Just charge in there. Let's crush this Union pocket right here. All of this while trying to hang on before he can bring reinforcements down on me. We just got to drive this bar a little further to the left. He's got 29,000 casualties now. pick it. Send them all. Get in there. I've lost 18,000 men. That's going to be hard to replace. This is going to end up being a major victory if we inflict a few more casualties. What a mess down in here. Absolute mess. Break those guns. Texas boys getting in on the action. That's Fry. Just 
got to keep an eye out and make sure there isn't some union division that appears somewhere that I wasn't expecting. Because they're out there. He's got, he's still got 116,000 man army. Or what's left of it. Got the Hell Riders back here. Let's bring them up. I may have gotten a little too aggressive here. Oh, why is Fry facing that way? Come on, Fry. Ah, he broke because of it. Darn it. Let's charge into Hooker's line right here. Oh no, not another Union Army. Fourth Corps. Ah! No! It took too long. That bar just shifted way over because Harney arrived. Oh no. I think I missed my window of opportunity. Try and hit Hooker. Now it's all the way over shifted to a minor defeat because he's got all those new men that just showed up. That shifted his percentage in terms of casualties, shifted the balance of power on the battlefield. It's all the way over now. He's got 140,000 men. Ah, that last army was just one too many. If I had defeated him an hour sooner. The bar started shifting over, 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 over from it was all the way at the edge here, and it shifted all the way back to the middle. And right when I got to the middle, it showed up as a defeat. Uh, I actually thought that maybe I was hanging on, but I guess not. And it's going to go down as a major defeat because of the casualty percentage. I'm at 31%. I inflicted 38,000 casualties on the enemy, but... Uh, uh, that's disappointing because I thought for a while I had a chance. So there are the final numbers. Jeb Stewart's Army of Northern Virginia loses a huge chunk of the manpower. Uh, out of 83,000, we lost 28,000. I mean, those are just not easily replaceable numbers. That's a third of my army. We inflicted 40,000 casualties, but the Union can handle that. He can take those losses. I cannot. Oh, that's rough. That's really devastating. All right, well, things have cleared out in central Kentucky a little bit. Uh, we can see that the threat of the Army of East Tennessee, the threat of the French who are now in southern Missouri, uh, is helping with that. The Army of the West is doing its job in holding these guys off. Uh, we're trying to work on a fort there. It hasn't completed yet. I don't know why the Fort Woodbury garrison is moving like that instead of staying in Fort Woodbury. I don't know what's going on there, so. Everything is going well except in Virginia. And we just lost Fort Monroe, so that's a huge problem because now we've got another threat coming up from the peninsula. Things are just going from bad to worse in Virginia really need to be able to spread things out here so I can get over there and help them. French Expeditionary Corps, 34,000, disaster at Fort Hooker. That's outside of Richmond now. 
All right, he's uh, surprisingly attacking my army of East Tennessee. That's a very winnable battle against Henry Halleck. In fact, forget winning. This is one where we need to absolutely crush him. And then we need to use a base of supply there to march north and start threatening Southern Ohio so we can pull some of the pressure off of the armies around Richmond. Okay, pretty straightforward. He should be coming down from right here. I'm gonna move as far in that direction as I can. And we're gonna hit him and hit him hard. Just gonna move forward with everybody at once. We absolutely need to destroy this army. Looks like he's gonna get there first. We're all moving to, toward the same general area here. Oh, no, 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 guns. Pull back, please. We've gotta get in there and save what's left of those guns as quickly as I can. They're still moving forward. What are they doing? Stop. That was my fault for allowing that to happen. The good news is we were able to deal with that lead unit pretty quickly. Bad news is we lost that battery. Now they'll they'll recover for the next battle. Dang. Well, of course he was wounded. That's the unit that Lost everybody. Let's get Forrest up there. Bourbon Rebels. Swamp Riders on the front lines. Got the Orphan Brigade still wanting to move forward here for some reason. try to move. We'll stop them in time. Like I said, I want to completely destroy this army, so actually I think what we're going to do here is I'm going to send the Kuiper Dragoons not up the road, dude. Not up the road. We've got Barksdale's cavalry moving into position here. Colonels are going to come up here on this fence. Hard time getting orders to be followed here right now. Here they come. He's all spread out along this road and we caught him. So as much as I'm having trouble with that, it's causing problems for him too. bunched up right now. I want to 
try and get behind him before the battle's over. So our Kentucky colonels are going to get in here on this fence now. Now we've got them surrounded. This is what I was after. It's taking Greg way too long to get in there with his cab, though. Alright, there the enemy's retreating. So now we charge in and we try to destroy him. Whether or not we can cause any of these units to surrender, we'll see. Looks like some of them just dissolved. It's a major victory, though, which is much needed. Yeah, we're only taking out about 32%, though. I was hoping to do better than that. All right, official totals, 4,100 casualties for him, 1,400 for me. A much needed victory that opens up Eastern Kentucky. And we've already kind of opened up Central Kentucky. Uh, but things are really, really bad in the East while really good in the West. It's kind of the opposite of what was happening in the real Civil War at this point. Um, so we'll see what happens. But we're going to wrap it up, I think, right there. Um, let's just wait and see what the situation is real quick after that. Because we're really going to have to rely heavily on the French. The The British are still attacking up in Pennsylvania, and they're drawing a little bit of pressure, but just not quite enough. Okay. Glorious victory at London. I'm waiting for these supply depots to finish. Once those are finished, we move the Army of East Tennessee up. We start threatening Southern Ohio. The Army of the Kanawha is over there, but that's only because they retreated there after that disaster in Richmond. Uh, pressure's going to get increasingly bad in the Richmond area. Uh, I don't know why the readiness is so bad uh, for this army here. Let's upgrade these supply depots. Maybe that'll help. Do I really only have one supply depot there? That's probably the issue. I can't even build any new ones right now. The French are in and behind that Union Army now. He's going to have to go after them. He can't just let them march at Central Illinois. So the Army of the Ohio retreated back up and over to St. Louis, and now we see the French Expeditionary Corps pulling back. So not an ideal situation there. I was really hoping he would engage the enemy, not just run away at the first sight of him. But that's where we're at. This first corps has got 41,000 men. I didn't realize he was that strong. We still do hold Cairo. Army of Tennessee is just still in a really bad situation in terms of its readiness. So uh, we can't do much. Okay, we can go ahead and start building another depot now, which I'm going to have to do. I need a couple more depots to be able to feed that army. These depots are done, which we're going to upgrade. And I think the Army of East Tennessee is in a readiness state to where we can move. Uh, let's march toward Lexington and see what that does. Oh, he's got a fourth corps down here. Didn't see that coming. Fort Ayers hopefully is enough to hold him off. That's 25,000 men right there. We actually might have to go deal with them. Because he, yeah, I'm going to have to pull back and deal with that army. Because if he takes these supply depots, I'm in trouble. Let's go hit that, hit that fourth corps. What's happening here? We technically still hold Richmond. Somehow. And then the other thing going on is Army of the Kanawha. They actually had dissolved completely after that last battle. Uh, so we're waiting for them to reform and then we can send them back or send them somewhere. I might just have to go at Ohio. Where's the French? 
All right, they're still there. They're sitting right here with 36,000 men and 80 guns. The Army of the Ohio came back down here. Actually, that's just a headquarters. Okay, I think I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up right there. It's September of 1863. Uh, we'll be back again very soon. Uh, with some more episodes every other day is the plan moving forward we'll get back to some regular content i won't be traveling anymore for the next couple of months uh, so we should be good at least till the middle end of june thanks for watching